Today in Crazy Performance Repair, we're going to be doing some tests on a three-wire sensor, particularly an oil pressure sensor, and this particular one is on a Buick LeSabre. So let's go ahead and get started with the testing. This one in particular does have a failure some way where it does not work. Now the, we'll go ahead and start the car up. It has oil pressure, but it's claiming that we do not have oil pressure. Now if I go through the dash, I know in the options here, this thing is so dusty. I know if I go through this this option deal here, it'll tell me zero oil pressure because the guy showed me last night. But basically he had replaced the oil pressure sensor with a used one, theoretical known good used one, and it did not make a difference. However, he was headed to the town where there's a new one anyway, so I told him to pick them up. I may or may not use it, but we are gonna diagnose what's wrong with this one today and in the process explain exactly what is going on with how these sensors work. So first things first, we need to find the sensor on this car. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna bring this new one with, just because I believe it's relevant to show you what exactly is happening here. So we have the new one and we will pull it out just to look. You can see we have the hole for where the pressure is applied to the sensor. We have the actual sensor body itself, and then on here there are three wires. One wire is going to be a signal wire, one is going to be a ground, and the other one is going to be a 5 volt reference wire. So what it has is it has the three pins, so you got your 5 volt here, your ground here, and this will be your signal wire. So depending on where the pressure is, low, high, it'll be low voltage or high voltage or vice versa, depending on how they decide to read it in the particular vehicle. But that is how all three wire sensors work. So let's get down to this one and we're gonna show you how to measure and test for these three signal wires to make sure they are all correct. Okay, I have my volt gauge or voltmeter down here. I'm on the floor, I, didn't wanna, I don't have room on the hoist. Of course, this thing's gonna run its air compressor. But I have the ground on a, what I feel is a good ground. Now, when you put something on like a bolt like this, like I'm doing, make sure to work the terminal back and forth like this while the clamp is on there. It'll make sure to give it a better contact. The wire that we're looking at in question is right here. It's got oil on it because this oil sender that they put in is leaking, so that's probably not a good sign for the oil sender. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this meter here. We're gonna just set it on for checking voltage. Nice, simple test and we are going to probe these wires. I have the key on in the ignition right now. There's our five volt signal. So we got a five volt signal. We should have a ground. And then the signal wire, come on, there we go. Signal wire, we're getting 0 0.02, but clearly it's not plugged in. So now what I need to do is I need to plug this sensor back in, or this, this plug back into the sensor, and I'm going to back probe the connector here. Now this one has a full rubber, rubber weather pack connector, and what I wanna do is try and go right alongside the wire without damaging the weather pack part of the connector to keep it from uh, having a leak, because if it springs a leak, you could corrode wires and damage wires if they're not damaged on this thing already. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing plugged back in, and then I will show you that scenario. All right, I pulled you guys out of the housing for this part because I'm gonna shove the camera way up alongside the engine here to show you what I have. Uh, hopefully the sound doesn't get funky, but I hope you're gonna need some light. There you can see the probe going right alongside the wire there. So, that's as good as I can get it. I, I put it right alongside the wire so I didn't damage anything. Back probing can damage things, so be cautious when you do that. And you can see, now I'm getting a reading on that signal wire of 0.44. The engine is not running, but the key is on. So that would be your zero oil pressure reading. And what we're gonna do now is go ahead and start the engine and I will leave you guys to watch the oil pressure go up or the, the voltage go up as the engine starts. So 
So now we can see it didn't hardly go up at all, which is a bad sign for the sensor because the engine sounds fine. So we're going to throw a new sensor in there and then we will see what it does after that. All right, so here's the old sensor. It was clearly leaking through the head unit. So this is the old unit. Um, we have the volt, made, volt gauge back up there, reading zero because it's not running right now. I will go ahead, key on the vehicle, and then of course I will uh, start it up and you will get the chance to see the difference. So I'll set you right there. better now we actually have a volt reading so now that it's actually showing two and a half volts that tells me it's probably reading about 40 psi because typically they're 80 psi sensors it might be a 100 psi sensor i don't know but uh either way two and a half volts that'd be roughly 40 psi so we are good to go on that front and to confirm that fact we are going to go into here and the oil light is no longer on now let's see uh, what our pressure is at uh, clean this off so that you guys can see because you can't see through all that dust all right where is the menu this must be a hundred psi sensor because it's saying 64 psi Either way, that's much better than nothing. So we should be good to go on this vehicle now. However, I do want to mention something else yet as far as uh, testing these things go. Now, if you happen to run across this issue and you have engine codes for various sensors under voltage or short to ground or, sh or, or something of that nature, and you test that five volt reference signal, and say your engine's running really crummy maybe and you don't have any codes but you test that five volt reference signal and it shows like 3.8 volts or something weird uh that tells me that you have a wire that is sh either shorting out somewhere in the harness maybe possibly partially shorting the ground or you might have a situation where one of your other sensors is shorted in internally the sensor itself and it's dropping down the voltage from the ecm and the ecm can't provide enough current because it's requesting more current than the ecm has available so if a situation like that happens you are risking burning out your ecu but you need to find the sensor that's pulling down the voltage one way to do that key on have your voltmeter on that reference signal and start unplugging every circuit that is related to that particular um, five volt reference signal. Now, there's typically two or three five volt reference signals on most ECMs, uh, source signals, I should say, and it'll it'll affect everything in that chain, whichever one is causing the issue. So just sit and unplug each one until the voltage reference signal goes up. Once it goes up, you know the sensor that's suspect. If it doesn't go up, you know there's a wiring issue. If it goes up while you're getting ready to unplug a sensor, but you haven't unplugged it yet, there's a good chance that you have a wire in that vicinity that is shorting out to something. So pay very close attention when you're trying to diagnose something like this. This one was an easy one. This is not a big deal. It was just a bad sensor, and they replaced it with another bad sensor. So whatever it is what it is. Hopefully you like this video. Like, share, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Don't forget to check out my members only section on my website. I do have a paid membership that I post videos every single week with the exception of maybe two weeks out of the year. And it's just like a shop update, stuff like that. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video here on YouTube, which may be a long time from now, maybe quick. I never know what I'm doing on YouTube. I try, but I can only do so much. Thanks for watching.